Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Draw us near. Yes, draw us near, Lord Jesus. Draw us near into your presence. And we thank you. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word. We thank you that there is light and life in your spirit and in your word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are present. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your mercies and your grace upon our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you there is healing in your glory. And thank you that your glory are present in this moment. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, we adore you, you are Lord, Lord of our life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you happy and blessed? Thank you, thank you for being with me this morning. And, um, May the word of the, our Lord Jesus Christ bless you Amen. and um, brings healing to your soul and your spirit and your body um, wherever we need the touch from our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord of peace touch that, that place. So if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to John 1. John 1 verse 12 and this morning I want to speak to you a debtor to spirit a debtor to spirit hallelujah so I'm just waiting for you to get your the word of God with you and hallelujah John 1 verse 12 I'm going to read John 1 verse 12 and 13 and then we're going to John 6. Alright. So my theme this morning is a debtor to spirit. Now write everything that we have ever heard about grace. Alright. Listen. Grace does not make you a debtor to God. Alright. So every time when people speak of grace... The thing is, it's unmerited favor unto you. And you are not a debtor to grace. Alright. But the word is full and is alive. And it brings truth to us when we read everything that we need to know. And it will help us to understand and I think that maybe the church lost something because we have ministered so many years on grace that you are not a debtor of grace because grace is unmerited. You cannot work for it. All right. But you are a debtor of spirit. So many people will say, now what? Yes. You are a debtor of spirit. John 1 verse 12 says the following. But as many as received him. So is the people that receive him. To them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Those who received him. To them he gave the power to become the sons of God. To them that believe on his name. Alright. Believe on his name. Who owe their birth. Not to blood. Nor to the will of flesh. Who owe their birth. Alright. So look to me. If I say to you. You owe not your birth. To blood and flesh. It does not mean that you do not owe your birth to someone. Alright? You've got it. We, we, we have scripture this morning. So I want you to hear. So as many as receive him, 
To them, God gave the power to become the sons of God. That believe on his name. Then it says, who owe their birth neither to blood nor to the will of flesh. That of physical impulse. Nor to the will of man. That of na natural father. But to God. So owe oh, my birth to God. So, 1971, I was born, all right, through Niels and Anneke Weidemann. And then I was born. So, there came a time about, I was about eight years of age, walking in a field. I said to the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, my mom and dad knows you. Since three years of age, I'm almost every night in church. I know you, I love you, I want you. You, I want more of you. An eight-year-old boy in the field. And I said to the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, but I do not know if I'm born from above. So I know if I die at that age, I will go to heaven because I love God. I reckon Him as my Lord and Savior, but I do not know if I'm born from above. You see, born from above has nothing to do to take you to heaven. Born from above is the Spirit of God that will birth you into the kingdom of God. That is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That will make you a son on this earth because you believe on His name. He will give you the power to become righteous. Alright? So there is a big difference between Christians and and born again Christians on this earth. So the Lord Jesus, I said to the Lord, well, the only way I know is tomorrow morning, it's Sunday, uh, the preacher need to preach on the prodigal son. I love you. But I know for a fact, tomorrow if the preacher will preach about the prodigal son, I need to be born from above. I need to be born again. I need this scripture that I do not owe my blood, my birth to the blood and flesh to a natural father and mother anymore. I need to know I owe my birth to God. I am a debtor because O, oh, the Greek word for O, oh, I'm going to speak to you about it, means you are a debtor. I do not I am a debtor to grace because grace is unmerited favor that God gave to you. But now that you are birth by God, I owe my birth to God. I'm a debtor to God. And that's why my theme, the debtor to spirit. All right. So, next morning, the pastor was there um, and he said, to open your Bibles and when he say open your Bibles, I'm come to speak to you on the prodigal son. I was like gone. I was like no more. I was there, but I was no more. I felt the spirit of the living God came to that eight-year-old boy, and it stopped inside of me, and I was like sitting. I tremble before the God of this earth. An eight-year boy knew at that moment that God is alive. Something I did not hear anything that that preacher said. I just know I'm out of mind, out of my body, and I'm with God. I'm with God. And I was shattering. I, I sit there and I just said, Lord Jesus Christ, Please, don't come now. Please, because that time they pray and they preach about heaven and hell so many times to me. <laughs> so, for me, I, I will go to hell now. <laughs> if that pastor is not going to lay his hands on me. But, the man on the right hand of Jesus Christ, when Jesus hangs on the cross, says, Lord, just think on me. So I believe you only need to say, but as a boy, think on me. 
But I did not know it. I just sat there and said, Lord Jesus, that pastor must touch me. That pastor must touch me this morning. <laughs> I knew everything changed. Everything changed. My eyes, my ears, everything I look at was like, wow, this is awesome. The grass is green. The air, look at the beautiful. Everything was different. As a small boy, it was different. Wow, this is amazing. I've never seen clouds and trees and grass and ground and people like this before. Something happened to me. <laughs> it was amazing. I owe my birth to God since then. Amen, amen. Now John 6 verse 48. It says the following. I'm going to read you a few verses from verse 48. You owe your birth to the Spirit. Alright? You owe your birth to the Spirit. Just let me get my pencil here and I want to write. I want to you to listen to specific words now. I am the bread of life. Jesus is speaking now. I am the bread of life that gives life to the living bread. I gives life the living bread. So on my board I want you to see Jesus is living bread. Alright. You've got it. Alright. Then it says. Your forefathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and yet they died. Alright, so now, Jesus is saying, your forefathers, he's speaking to the Jewish people, ate manna. Your forefathers ate manna. Alright, what is manna? It's bread. Alright, your forefathers ate bread. So Jesus says, I am the living bread. Your forefathers ate manna, bread. Alright, see that. Yet they died. Alright, this is the bread that comes down from heaven so that anyone may eat of it and never die. So, they ate bread and I am living bread. Living bread that comes from heaven. All right, that comes from heaven. And it says, so that anyone may eat of it and never die. So, this one that comes from heaven, you will never die. And this one, they ate from the bread and they died. Okay. Verse 50, the bread that comes down from heaven so that anyone may eat of it and never die. I myself am the living bread. Verse 51 now. I myself am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And also the bread that I shall give for, for the life of the world is my flesh body. Alright? I want to read it now slowly. Alright? I myself am the living bread. Jesus is the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, who? Jesus. So, he came from heaven, you will never die, and it's Jesus. If you eat from Him, eat of Him. Eat Him. Alright? You will... Uh, I'm the living bread. He will live forever. 
He, he is also bread that shall keep, okay? If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And also the bread that I shall give for the life. And also, do you hear the word there? And also, so Jesus is the bread. Look to me. Jesus is the bread, the bread of life. You've got it. Yeah, yeah. And he gave also, and also the bread, and also the bread that I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. All right? So, Jesus and also bread. So Jesus is bread and he will give also bread for life to the world. All right. That is his flesh. All right. Then the Jews angri angrily contend with one another, saying, How is it able to live to give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto him, to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Alright. So if I would ask you a question. Do you know that you must come into Christ? You must be in him. All right, then most of you will say yes. I, we hear the gospel that we must be in him. All right. But if I ask you a question, how do you get into him? Then we wonder. Then I say to you, you must eat his flesh. Then you wonder again like, the Jews wonder, but how is it possible to eat his flesh? So, let me read this again. Whosoever eat my flesh and drink of my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eat of my flesh and drink of my blood dwelleth in me. Dwelleth in me. If you do what? Eat his flesh and drink his blood. Dwelleth in me. But how do you eat his flesh and drink his blood? Because the Jews ask the same question. Alright, you've got it. So it makes you wonder. Alright, this can be natural. Because they are offended. But how is it possible? You say... We must dwell in you. And the way is we must eat your flesh and drink your blood. But how? Verses 57. As the living Father have sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. He shall live by me. Alright? Also, the bread I give. Alright. Previously. Then it says. As the living father have sent me. And I live by the father. So he, have eateth, so he that eateth me. Even he shall live by me. He shall live. By me. Alright. So you shall live by me. 
eating Jesus and also the bread that he gives. Alright? Because it is by. You shall live by him. By eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And also to the bread that he shall give. Okay. So there's many questions now. Oh Lord Jesus. Help us. Then it says verse uh, 58. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. So here again. There is bread where people eat of and they will die. But there is another manna and bread that is from heaven. That when you eat of that, you shall live. It is bread and flesh and blood. When you eat the bread and the flesh, that's the place where you come into him. And that bread and blood will give you also bread to give. For life. And you will live by it. By this side. Okay. These see things. Verse 59. Said he in the synagogue. He taught in Capernaum. Many before. Therefore of his disciples. When they heard this. Say this. They say. This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? We must eat his flesh and drink his blood. And then he will give us bread also. And we must eat that as well. This is hard. His disciples. So it's not only the Jews. That listened to it and says, but how is it possible to eat of him? Even his disciples says, this is too hard. And did you know that many of them turned around and walked away? Yeah. Left Jesus Christ of this saying. All right. When these things said in a synagogue, all right, many of the four of his disciples says, oh, this is hard saying. Who can hear this? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Do this offend you? Do this offend you what I've said to you, that you must eat of me. All right. What and if ye, what? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. Alright. Then I place in brackets a word for us to understand it. And I put then. So what then? Then is not there. It's from I put in then for you to understand it. Alright. Jesus asked them. I say to you eat of me and drink my blood. Are you offended with this? Yes, we are offended. All right. Then he make a sentence. A statement. A statement. He will say, What then if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? Where did God came from? Jesus came from? He came from? Heaven. Or the Father. Because if you go further now, all right, with, this is John speaking. If you go further with John 7, 8, 9, 10, you see that Jesus is speaking, I'm going to the Father. I'm coming, I'm going to the Father, I'm going to the Father, all right. So heaven, don't think heaven like the place when you die, mm -hmm, that place, all right. He's the bread that comes from heaven or heavenly fear or the above life or father. You understand that? Okay. So now he says, What then if ye shall see the Son of Man ascended up where he was before? So where was Jesus the bread of life before? At the Father. Why would you ask me that question? 
or make that statement. If I speak to you, eat of me as bread. You are offended that I said to you, eat of me. What then if, I, if you see me go to the Father? What then? Will you be offended when I go to the Father? And I'm no more. I'm not there anymore. What then? What then will happen to you? When I say I'm going away. What then? What will happen to you then? If I'm not here. Can you hear? Does it start making sense now to you? Hello. It's a statement that Jesus said. But we do not understand it. But we must try to figure it out. So this is what it says. What will you do then? If I'm not here with you anymore. What will happen to you? I'm telling you. You must eat of my flesh. And drink of my blood. And the bread that I will give unto you. Must eat of that. Because one of these days. I'm going to the father. Because John 7. Till 14, 15, 16 is going, I'm going away, I'm going away to the Father, to heaven. I'm the bread that came from heaven. You need to eat me and then you will never die. And also the bread that I will give you. You shall live by that. Don't be offended what I'm saying. You need to eat of me. Alright. Then it says, Alright. It is the spirit that quickeneth. So, I'm going to, you know when Jesus Christ speaks to me, I call it um, plofklanke, but it's explosion words in English, alright? Then I heard that words very loud. It's explosive in my ear. Then I know, Jesus said, focus on that. This is how I'm listening to the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright, now, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profit nothing. The words what I speak unto you, they are spirit. Amen. And they are life. They are spirit. So, it is the spirit that quickeneth. My words that I speak to you is spirit and life. All right. So, look here, there is Jesus. Sorry, Jesus. Look, look on my board. There is you. Oh, sorry, Yella. Oh, that's you. This is Jesus. I'm going to read it slowly now, then you must see. All right. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. The words Amen. that I speak yes. unto you. Yeah. Yeah. The words is spirit. Yeah. What I speak unto you are spirit and life. Alright? The words that I speak unto you are spirit and life. Jesus is the bread of life yeah. that you eat. Mm -hmm. And He will also give you bread to give. The words that I speak unto you are spirit and life. Listen, this is not a statement outside of I am the bread of life, eat of me, eat of me, eat of me. You are offended. I'm going away. Don't be offended. If I'm not here, what will happen to you? My words is spirit and life unto you. So eat of me. How can we eat of him? 
Eat of me, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Eat of my bread. The words that I speak unto you. It's spirit and life. How do you come into Jesus? How do you eat of his flesh and drink of his blood? It's actually, we must think a little bit on it. It is eating the words. Yeah, amen. Because my words, I, my words is spirit and life. So first of all, I started off by saying, those who believe in the name of Jesus Christ, they are the sons of God. You remember that? And then it says, I owe my birth, not to flesh, but I owe it to the Spirit, or God. All right? Then we say, this is God is saying, I am the bread of life. Eat of me and drink of me. How is this possible? I'm offended. But if I'm telling you this morning, eat of me and drink of me, we all would think, okay, um, that means maybe it's normal. Um, what, communion? Yeah. Huh? The Lord's table? So, it's a type and a shadow, so we will think, all oh, right, that. But to, to stand before the Lord, yeah. and those who believe in His name shall be sons of God. He is the living bread. You need to eat the living bread. Mm. You need to eat His flesh. That means you need to believe. Mm -hmm. sure. That is the eating of flesh. You need to believe the word and the words. That is the eating of flesh. <laughs> wow. You must hear the words, the words that I speak to you. They are spirit and they are life. Because it's in a context of I am the bread of life. You need to eat of me. How is it possible? Who, who is going to eat his flesh and drink his blood? No one naturally, but spiritually we need to do it. But how do we eat? And it's not that Lord's table of the supper of the Lord. It is the words, I'm going away. If I'm going away, what then? But my words is the bread. That is the spirit and life. Just keep on. All right. And it says, Ah. It is the spirit that quickeneth, and the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. We are coming back to that flesh that profits nothing. All right? It is the flesh. It is the natural bare bread that profit nothing. Look to me. Look ye on my board. It's in a context of bread eat that brought death. Bread that brings life. In that context, the flesh profit nothing. What flesh? This bread. The natural bread. Alright, not literal bread that profits nothing. Not buns and like a bread they bake in a bakery that profits, profits nothing. It means the flesh. Flesh means this bread because my flesh is living bread. Do you hear? Yeah. So natural bread, oh, natural bread is flesh, only flesh. Yeah. <laughs> we have seen it. Oh, listen, Jesus says, I, uh, actually, you know, it's not the bread there on the table. You will not live by natural bread there, you know, like peanut butter and bread. 
This is how we thought about yeah, it. Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. So you need actually him as well to live by. Mm -hmm. But that bread is not like a bakery bread and peanut butter. You must sustain your natural flesh. It speaks in context of they eat manna and flesh, but they died. That manna is yeah. bread. Yeah. They died. But I am the living bread. I am not flesh. I am spirit. Sure. And I speak to you my words. I speak to you our spirit and life. Yes. The natural flesh profits nothing. This side. Now what is the natural bread thing. What is then the natural bread? I said it's flesh, but the natural bread stands for something. And it's all, yeah, it's, it's something in the Old Testament. This side something in the Old Testament. This side is, is New Testament. Yes. All right? Yeah. This, it is the spirit that quickeneth. This side is spirit. Mm. All right. The flesh profits nothing, this side. The words that I speak to you is not normal words. It is spirit and life because I'm living bread. Bread that life, that lives. All right? But there are some of you that believe not. There's some of you that believe not. That means they are people that are not eating. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not. He would, should betray him. Alright? I'm going to Deuteronomium 8 verse 1, 2, 3. Hallelujah. Are you happy? Yeah. So eat of me. How do I eat of me? Just believe. I am the bread of life. And listen to my words. And as you listen to my words and you believe my words, you are eating my flesh and drinking mine because I am the bread of life. All right? The Tanomium said, 8 verse 1. Be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today. There's a key word. That was an explosion word in my ear when I heard that. The Lord says today. That means now. Today means now. So be careful to follow every command or every word. Be careful to listen to every word that God is speaking. Now, to you now, mm -hmm. all right, so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on an oath to your forefathers. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert, not led you into the desert, led you in the desert. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You all the way in the desert, these 40 years, to humble you and to teach you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. Keep his words. Hello? Keep his words yeah. or commandments. Another word for commandment is words. The Lord lead you in the desert. All right. Be careful. 
I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on his oath to your forefathers. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble you and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. So if we read this on our own, we will think that the Lord Jesus Christ will take you into the desert to teach you. But start with verse 1. Because you did not listen to my commandments now, you are in a desert, and because you are in a desert, God will lead you there as well. But God did not put you in the desert. They, they sinned. They did not listen to the commandment of the Lord. That's why they walked 40 years in the desert. So the Lord did not test them. They were tested by their sins because they did not follow the commandment. Let's be careful to follow every commandment today. You did not follow my commandment today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised and oath to your fathers. Remember now, because you did not listen to my commandment. Remember how the Lord led you all the way in the desert these 40 years. To humble you and to test you. In order that to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. Then he says, he humbled you, causing you to hunger. God humbled you, causing you to hunger. And then feeding you with manna. Which neither you nor your forefathers had known. To teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> Listen here. Look here. I must make it clear to you. So, here I am, God. I want to speak to you, Wes. Listen. Today, now. Let my words is life and bread. I am bread and it's spirit and life. If you buy and you, you listen, you will live and not die. Your forefathers never listened to my words. They did not obey my commandments. They eat of the bread. They were 40 years your forefathers were 40 years in the desert. They walked around. Yes, I showed them their hearts to test them, to show them. But it's not necessary. They could actually only listen to my words. That is spirit and life. But because they did not listen, they went 40 years in the desert, this side. And that made them hungry. And then I gave them manna. But they died of that manna. They died of that manna that they gave them. I showed them their hearts. I made them hungry for 40 years. I did not choose them to be 40 years in the desert. I said to them, come out of Egypt and go to the promised land. I promise it. Yes, they had to walk through the desert, but it would actually took two weeks to go through the desert to the promised land. Listen and obey every day now the Lord's voice who are spirit and life. But they did not. Now God is saying, yes, I will lead them. Yes, I will make them hungry. But they actually could have been that side. They could have listened to my words and eat my bread that I will give them and they would live by that, by the Spirit. I will make them angry and give them mana, but they died. 
It says, yeah. to show them that man does not live on bread alone, but every word that comes, comes from the mouth of the Lord. All right. So every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. Hello. Hello. The same sentence and verse. You shall not live by bread. You shall live by my words. Same sentence means. Hello. Watch here. You shall not live by bread. You shall live by my bread. Because I'm the living bread. Hey, I did not say this is connected to that. The Bible connects this and that. When Jesus speaks in John about this, he mentioning this scripture to Moses that Moses talked about of living bread. It's not me that putting it together. So this manna, they died. Of. God made them hungry. Yes, He led them through the desert, but to test them and to show them, hey, you could have been listening to my words, my words. Mm -hmm. So you shall not live by every bread, but every bread that comes out of my mouth, every word. This is spirit and this is flesh. Yeah. How do I eat Jesus' flesh? By believing. Yeah. What? Then I receive His words. Believing His words. Then I receive Spirit. Then I don't need to go into the desert. And eat natural bread. Not bread and butter and peanut stroop. Yeah. Other bread. That is flesh. That is. Listen. Everything you do. Every word that you speak. That is based on your works. Your own strength is flesh. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Everything, th the flesh profits nothing. It does not mean, I don't go and exercise, it doesn't help you. Exercise help you. And today we are going to eat lacquer bread. More peanut butter and syrup. It will help you, man. But the Bible is not about that. It is about the flesh and the bread of Moses. Still in Moses' time. And Jesus will mention it in Matthew 4 verse 4. You shall not live by... When Satan came to attack him in the 40 days of... He says, you shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. What is word? It is bread. It's living bread. How do you eat Jesus? Drink his blood and eat his flesh. Ish, it's bad. No, it's actually easy. When you believe and you hear his word, the commandments today, you believe it. It's spirit and life. And you obey it. Yeah. You are eating and drinking his Then you have life. Because my words are spirit and life. Amen. Romans 8 is my last scripture that I want to read to you. I started off now by saying, you owe your birth unto God. Remember that? You owe your birth unto God. Yeah, yeah. Alright. God is spirit. Romans 8 verse 11. Amen. Yeah. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus. Listen to words. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. By Spirit He raised you up and you will be quickened by 
spirit. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to flesh, to live after the flesh. We are debtors. That Greek word I say to you is afiletais. It's a Greek word afiletais. It means, therefore, brethren, we are debtors. Now the translation says, we are obligated, or we have an obligation. We are a debtor. Another translation will say that Greek means an hour. A person in debt. So, you do not owe. Means you are a debtor. Your birth to natural, but you owe your birth to God. This says, for brethren, we are debtors. A person that is a ower. A person that is in debt. We have an obligation. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Romans 8 verse 14 says, Who is led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Who are led by the Spirit of God. Our first scripture, let's read that again. John 1 says, But as many as receive him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. To them that believe on his name. So you can become a son of God when you believe on his name. You believe, when you believe on his name, you are a son of God. Our last verse says, those who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. So believe and let. There is an obligation. You are a debtor. You owe your birth. And that what God did for you. Not you are not an hour of grace. But you are an hour, a debtor. To God and Spirit by believing and be led by Him to be a son of God. You are a debtor to eat His living bread. Believing His words that is Spirit and life. Those who believe are sons of God. Those who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. You are a debtor of, it says it so nicely, for you are a debtor, brethren, not to flesh, to natural bread. You are not a debtor to natural bread. For bread, Natural bread will let you die. But the bread comes from heaven is spirit and life. If you can listen to that, you will live. How do you eat of this? By believing and be led. You are obligated, you are adapted to spirit. But if you Eat natural bread. You shall not live by natural bread alone, but every spirit that, every word that comes from the Lord, that is spirit and life. 
If you eat my commandments, did the Nomen eat? You would have never gone into this place where he leads you, but this is not his heart. Hello. Can you see it? So natural bread, this side, and flesh, is any words that is not from Spirit. Or from Jesus Christ. Is natural bread. And natural flesh. And it will profit you nothing. It is like another word is you can do the law. You can try by works, your own works, your own strength is flesh. It profits you nothing. God will lead you there and he will make you angry and he will test you there, but you will still die. But if you can come tomorrow in this morning to this side where you know I'm the bread of life, you eat of me and drink of my blood, meaning you listen to my words, my words is spirit and life, you believe it and you let it lead you this side, you will live. Amen. I rest my case. Amen. I hope you can see it. It is... It is verses that is, you will never fit. Normally, will you fit John 6 where Jesus speaks of, I'm the bread. Or, and then go to Deuteronomium 8. And then go to Matthew 4 verse 4. And then go to Romans 8 verse 11. But that is actually four puzzle pieces that is fitting together. That will explain what Jesus means if he says, Hey man, if you eat bread, you will die. It will profit you nothing. And it's not bread and butter and peanut and strop. And your flesh will not profit. It means actually law. It means your own works. It means everything you try and words that is not from Him. That is full of life. Then they eat the bread and they did die. They were angry. God gave them bread, but they still died. You need spirit and life. You need to believe and let every day, each day. And you are in obligation. You owe it to God to listen and to be led by Him. Because you owe not it to natural flesh anymore. But you owe it to God and you owe your walking to the Spirit. You are a debtor. A debtor means you need to pay it back. You owe me. But you cannot pay your salvation by works. Then you eat of this bread. You cannot pay Christ because that's in unmerited favor. But as the Lord Jesus Christ birth you, you have now the Spirit within you, and you believe Him and eat His words, and let that words lead you. Believe it and lead you. That is the eating of His flesh that is living bread. That. And then when you do this, you are now debtor, because you give it back what you owe to Him. May Jesus Christ bless you. May the love of Lord Jesus be with you. Amen and amen.
Hey guys, the Mill Venomon here from True North Ministries. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below. And also go follow our Instagram page. Link is in the description. Thank you. Blessings. Amen.